Hi, I'm Max Rodriguez, and this is Writers on Writing. Our guest today is Edgar J. Ridley, international business consultant and author of The Golden Apple, Changing the Structure of Civilization. Edgar, welcome to Writers on Writing. Thank you very much for having me. We're so pleased to have you. You've written quite a work there, two books, volume one and two, titled The Golden Apple, Changing the Structure of Civilization. Your premise is that we, as a global community, are driven by what you term symbolic thought, symbolic thinking, and symbolic language. What is that exactly? Well, first of all, I think it's extremely important to understand how important symbolism is. The great scholar John Dewey had stated that the greatest discovery in human history was the discovery of symbols. The reason why he said that is because out of symbols came all religion, out of symbols became uh, our intellectual growth in the arts and science and in every academic discipline. I call that a, a, a neurological misadventure. What does that mean? When early man began to mythologize, when early humans in Africa began to experience the phenomenon of nature, he had to put a name to it. What he couldn't understand, he began to mythologize. Once humans began to mythologize, that brought about symbolic thinking. And you could say symbolic thinking came first and then in concert with the mythologizing. That is what I call a neurological misadventure that has caused all the problems that we face in the universe today. So, so you call it a, a neurological misadventure. I see it as this is how man first began to understand and put into language a, a, natural, a natural environment. Symbols are not innate to the neurological processes of the human brain. So what is? Symptoms are innate to the neurological processes of the human brain. So when man, when man became to mythologize, he, be, he kicked in a symbolic thought process, which means that uh, when you think symbolically, you're thinking above and beyond what is ordinarily present and what is ordinarily absent, obvious. Like when you look at a tree, and when you see cows and bulls jumping out of that tree, then you mythologize in that tree. And that is what we call a neurological misadventure. When man began to look at other humans and understood that, wow, there are different skin colors. So he began to mythologize what skin colors are superior and what skin color is inferior. And that is what we call the origin of racism. So symbolic thought produced and was the origin of what we call racism. And the same thing with religion. Uh, when, man when man began to mythologize the natural forces that he experienced, he saw that it was caused by magic or some outside forces that he couldn't understand, and that produced a myth mythological way of thinking. So when you look at the world today, you, you will find that most of the conflicts in the world today, most of the uh, tragic uh, uh, killings in the world today came out of outgrowth of religion and racism. Early man was confronted by his environment. That which he didn't understand, he mythologized. Exactly. That is to say, he, he, he gave it a supernatural type of definition, something that extended beyond his control. That's right. And from that comes the idea of religion, comes uh, root causes of war. Yes? That's right. That's right. Okay. Um, and, and how else does, does symbolic thinking, that is a representation of mythology, symbolic thinking, mm -hmm. how else does that drive us today? It affects every human activity and every academic discipline. Now, the, our whole educational system is built on myth, like the curriculum. 
where who can uh, when uh, students are st still taught in the day school such fundamental things like the Egyptians were white or Egyptians were not uh, 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 black African people. And still, uh, I'm still amazed that some scholars feel as though that Egypt is not in Africa, but it's in part of some place like the Middle East. So we still have that symbolic thought process applicable simply because as we begin to see, when you think symbolically, you, th you can think in any way that you wish to think to keep, to, uh, to uh, go to the point that you want to make. In other words, if you want to say that black people are inferior, then you look at them in a mythical way and say these are inferior people because of the color of their skin, the way they th think, their facial features, anything that you can make up. And that is a way of mythologizing. So then who's responsible then for symbolic thinking? Because what I'm understanding is that symbolic thinking represents our answer to what is different from me. Absolutely. We mythologize. We mythologize. We mythologize the difference. Right. And, and I think one important point has to be made is that we do not face reality. By mythologizing, we stay away from facing what is real or what is reality. So within the human context, what is real? What is real in the human context is, is what you see that is happening that is reality, that is really happening. Like if you see a dog, you're not gonna say that dog is, is a monkey. And once you start that pattern, then, then of course that's mental illness. And unfortunately, symbolic behaving people are mentally ill. And I, and I came to that conclusion by, you know, traveling all over the world, and I see the decision that people are making about other people, about their lives, about you know, this constant uh, who is going to control the world, all these kinds of, 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 of thinking processes that cause a tremendous amount of harm and destruction. Uh, the people who uh, came in and destroyed the buildings in 9-11, those people were sick people. They were mentally ill because out of some misguided feelings about the cause of the problems in the world, they had a theological bent in the background and they wanted to destroy people who they felt were indeed evil. Mm -hmm. But your premise is, is that we're all mentally diseased in that we are all impacted by symbolic thought. Not everybody is. Not everybody is. Uh, what I'm saying is that when we behave symptomatically, and what do I mean by sim behaving symptomatically? Let, let me say this. The moment we stop thinking symbolically, symptomatic thinking kicks in. That is why we say symptomatic thinking is innate to the human processes, or the neurological processes of the human brain. Symptomatic thinking is innate. Symbolic thinking is a learned procedure. The, uh, the uh, scholars at, uh, have stated that most likely every child begins to think symbolically about between seven and nine months of age, they begin to behave or think in a symbolic way. And uh, once we begin to think symbolically, then of course we begin to learn further uh, ways of enhancing that symbolic thinking process. And that is indeed a tragic event that has occurred in, the, in, in civilization that has caused the problems that we see today. So, so I understand, especially in that example of a child, a child learns to think symbolically from taking its cues from its environment. It's a learned right learn procedure, mm -hmm. right? Prior to that, it was all very empirical. This means this. Yes, it's symbolic. It's, you know. As a matter of fact, uh, scholars used to think that um, the only thing that separates Homo sapiens from the rest of the animal uh, world is uh, humans' ability to think uh, symbolically. But now we know that animals can also use symbols and think uh, symbolically. So this view of that what separates us from the other species is our 
ability to symbolize is not, is, is not true. So if there was a moment, a neurological moment, how then, and, and our practice from that point mm-hmm. has been to practice symbolic thinking, how do we practice symptomatic thinking without the practice of it, without the benefit of knowing really what it is? It's an existential endeavor. In other words, when we begin to support each other, love each other, and see and, and encounter each other as humans, for instance, if we encounter someone and say that, you know, whether that person is black, white, Asian, or whatever, as we see that person as a human being, as we see that person as a, 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 a fellow homo sapiens that we can enjoy life with, and not mythologize that person. Because we have a tendency to mythologize. As soon as we see someone, we, we seem to accept our myths. We seem to accept assumptions that are indeed crazy. And you can see this operate in the world today. I mean, and that drives up all the kinds of issues that causes problems for humanity. Right. And, and, and conversely, someone black may see someone white and automatically or subconsciously think of them as superior, which in turn diminishes that that diminishes oneself. That's true. That's true. That's true. So an example of how symbolic thinking racism impacts us all. Absolutely. Yeah. So what would a symptomatic life look like? How would that change the world? Because as I understand it, you think that your idea can in fact not revolutionize, but evolutionize the world. Well, I think, I think it will change the world qualitatively, change civilization qualitatively. Mm-hmm. Uh, there would be no problem in terms of, of, of gender problems. Women would be treated respectfully. So then it's a human condition. It's, it's, a, it's a human condition. And it's a human condition because it goes all the way back to Africa when man began to think symbolically. Because we have to understand, symbol systems originated in Africa. Symbol systems originated in Africa. All religion originated in Africa. So most of the concepts that we use today are indeed uh, have their origin in Africa. And there may be some cultural or, or slight changes to these concepts, but they all originate in Africa. Uh, one of the interesting things is we did training in, in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia, for instance, at this hotel where we were brought in to train the, the hotel staff how to uh, communicate with people from different cultures from all over the world. And one of the things that uh, was brought out is that um, when a uh, black, and this was in, in Southeast Asia, uh, when, when a black person gets on the elevator, uh, uh, a white person suddenly clenches, a white woman clenches her, uh, her, uh, her bag because automatically she thinks that that black person is going to steal their pocketbook. That happened happened. on the subway. (laughs) And that happens. And that is a fundamental uh, example of how we think mythologically, Mm -hmm. symbolically. When we we assume assumptions that are not there, Mm -hmm. but we imagine them being there because we have been taught that these kinds of scenarios will happen and we have been taught the conclusion of these scenarios. Now, now what you said earlier is something that stayed with me. So, so I heard you say that symbolism, symbolic thinking, began in Africa. Absolutely. Okay, so if symbolic thinking, then if a, an expression of symbolic thinking is racism, I'm hearing you say that that the idea or the root of racism is found in Africa. Well, we have this is a, this is a, a touchy subject, uh, especially for those who, who call themselves Afrocentric. Afrocentric. But the, the thing of it is, we have to admit that even our great scholar, Cheikh Diop, who was my professor, he had talked about uh, when the Egyptians were killing people who had red hair and, and pale skin because they thought they were evil, because uh, they looked like they were different, you know. But we have to admit, and Chekhan Diop has said that in his, in, in his, in, in his books. So uh, 
that in fact did happen, you know, and, I, and, and most Egyptologists uh, know, know that, that indeed Egyptians murdered and killed people who did not look like them. That's a fact. And so uh, that's why it's, it, it's a, a problem of all homo sapiens mm -hmm. in terms of, and, and it's funny you say that because historically scholars did not want to admit the symbol system started in Africa. You had scholars who thought that the first symbolic expression was in Europe with cave paintings. That's totally wrong. And those assumptions were made by people who wanted to continue the uh, myth mythological thinking of the inferiority of African people. You know, and, and I see a, a, at least a, a discussion point here. If we are agreeing that symbolism began in Africa and that racism is an expression of symbolism, it allows us some access to the idea of racism and an opportunity to change the dialogue from one of blame to one of we are all impacted and it is in fact a social disease. Absolutely. You can say we are colonized. Humanity is colonized by symbol systems. Mm -hmm. Symbol systems have colonized our minds. I, and, and that's why I call it so important to understand that was a neurological misadventure. That's what happened to Homo sapiens. And, uh, now, point, point of distinction, clarity. Was it a neurological misadventure or was it an evolution? Was it a physical, a human evolution? No, you would have to call it a neurological misadventure because mm -hmm. uh, the symbol symptoms are not innate mm -hmm. to the brain processes. So how do we get there? How do we get to symptomatic thinking? And, and I think that that's a good question. And, and, and a good answer to that is that it's rather easy. It's easy. It's not a complicated uh, phenomenon. Mm. When man begins to not think symbolically, symptomatic thinking kicks in because there's no effort because it's innate to the processes of the brain. It's, it's, it's resident in us. It's there. It's there. So we don't have to worry about how I behave this way. Or how I, in the minute you accept people as they are, the minute that you begin to solve problems that, that have a positive effect on humanity, whether it's climate change or poverty or starvation around the world, then you, it kicks in. Symptomatic thinking kicks in because you're not mythologizing anymore. Mythological thinking is erased, it, it, it's eradicated from a, uh, from a behavior pattern. Mm -hmm. Or and neutralized. Huh? It's, it's eradicated. Mm. And that brings in uh, the pattern of, 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 of symptomatic thinking. There's absolutely only two ways of thinking. Either you think symbolically or you think symptomatically. Now, that is an academic neurological fact that cannot be denied. The problem is to understand that we have to eradicate symbolic thought from our behavior. So what, and once we do that, then you automatically behave in a way that is beneficial for civilization and, and culture, or wherever you may do, be and solve the problems that exist. Unfortunately, we live in a world today that do not want problems to be solved. They, you know, consultants don't want problems to be solved if it affects the world in such a way where there's a complete metamorphosis and that we have a world of justice and where everybody in the world has food to eat, starvation, poverty is eliminated. And unfortunately, you have people in the world that don't, they don't want to see that thing happen. So you're, you're laying the ills of the world at the feet of consultants? Consultants run the world because they give advice to top leaders all over the world and how it affects populations. So one of the things that uh, we do is that we hold seminars, we hold consultations with, with, with government leaders and uh, 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 corporate uh, corporations and to explore how their thinking affects not only their jobs, but the people that they come in contact with. So let me repeat this, and I think this is important. To solve these problems that we're talking about, 
you have to stop thinking symbolically. And once we begin to stop thinking symbolically, then we begin to initiate symptomatic behavior. So if every one of us start treating people in ways that we want to be treated, that's very fundamental. If we can actually see a problem and see what is best for the masses of the people instead of a certain segment of, po of the population, then we begin to think symptomatically in terms of helping the masses of the people live in a way that is justifiable for a sane society. This is, this is, this is what I'm talking about. It's not, it's not rocket science. What, what is so difficult about this is you have people who do, do not want to lose control. The entertainment field is full of symbolism. And you can see that by the value system in the entertainment field. The, uh, the hip hop crowd, the, uh, 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 the, the, the films that are being made, the songs that are being sung, just the, the artistic ability of populations leave a lot to be desired because it's symbolic, it's symbolism. It's full of symbolic behavior and symbolic thought. You can really see that. And that is very destructive to not only culture, but the behavior of people and the behavior of, 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 of children, their children to come. So I get that symbolic thinking, symbolism really maintains the status quo. How do we implement a change because presumably that presumably those who benefit from the current status quo would no longer benefit in the same way? And who might be vested in that, in doing that? Pop, pop culture is a perfect example where you have uh, symbol systems thrown out in such a way that they will benefit only a certain segment of people in terms of gaining wealth. And, and the, uh, uh, the entertainment industry is a perfect example of that, where unfortunately, as I've talked to various young people, and you look at their heroes, and you look at their feelings of how to reach success and how to behave in a certain way. And it's so fundamental, it's so easy to see in terms of what liquor to drink, how much to drink, what clothes to wear, uh, uh, what, how do you look with your, in front of your peer group? All that is symbolism, symbolic behavior. And that, and that shows you the destructive nature of culture and the destructive nature that symbolism causes in culture. So I think that when we see culture and we see the media on top of that perpetuate and decides the value of this symbol systems. That's how we understand that and what is meant by symbolism uh, uh, controls the uh, processes of the, of the mind. In other words, we are, we are captive to our sim, uh, symbolic thought. Politically, then, it also sounds like we're never gonna get to term limits. Yeah. There's no vested interest in, in just walking away from power. Yeah. And that the idea that we are all still enslaved. Yeah, and, and what, what is important, Max, we, we kind of define what's going to cause us happiness. When, when, a per, when people are existentially unfulfilled, when they're unhappy, then they do things that uh, are not helpful to not only them as individual, but to the larger society. We, prom we, we promote objects and, uh, and, and have end goals that is really damaging. And it's damaging from generation to, gener to generation. And, and from the di that idea of these things being damaging, I see how you come to symbolism being a disease. And by extension, racism being a social disease. Yeah, and, and, and you, you're absolutely right, Max. And, and, and I realize and I sympathize how, is, how difficult it is people to accept the idea that symbolic behavior is indeed a mental illness when they have been taught the opposite for so long. And that is due to our educational system, which falsified, uh, causes false positives to uh, concepts that people end up living by and dying for. It, it starts with our educational institutions. 
who provide us with, with uh, tools that they say will make us successful. And these tools lead to our total destruction. And well, that's hard to accept. Matter of fact, it could be almost unbelievable when you get into these situations and you have assumptions that you've been taught over and over again as success vehicles. When these vehicles are nothing but symbolic uh, ways of, of running the world that will cause your destruction, the destruction of, of others, and then the destruction of the environment. It, well, if I'm following your thinking, your idea then is, is if symbolic thinking is the conveyor belt, every part that is brought to that conveyor belt is it works against us, is in fact defective. Yeah, that's true. So it, it matter not that it's the political system, the legal system, the educational system, it's all going to be defective because it's all going to advocate for the symbolic thought process. Absolutely, it affects every academic discipline in existence. If everything that surrounds us, if, if our environment supports the status quo, yeah. what incentive, where do we find the incentive to move from, from that status quo to another? Yeah, I think one of the things uh, you know, uh, I see happening is the fact that people are beginning, and I think this is really positive, people are beginning to understand that what we have here is not working. The systems and the assumptions that we have are not working. And you can see this existentially in terms of uh, our, our health system in terms of the, uh, the drug that's being used now. People are constantly, over and over again, being drugged, mm -hmm. where they uh, uh, alcoholism. So these kinds of, of, of personal problems, drugs, alcoholism, are caused by people who, are, who feel hopeless. They, they, they aren't fulfilled. Yeah, so, uh, America so, is certainly medicating so, itself. Medicating itself. So this is one of the, and people are realizing this fact. And, uh, and that is because of this emptiness that symbolic thinking provides us. You said something earlier in an earlier conversation that even for those for whom the status quo benefits, it's not even working for them. That's right. And, and, and that's, that's becoming very clear. Over and over again, as I've gone, I've been, I was in Kazakhstan, for instance, for instance, China, and people are so unfulfilled. And they're saying, nothing is working. Something has got to be done that will make us feel better. You know, and once you have the existential unhappiness and being unfulfilled, then an unhappy person makes war. You know, a, a happy person, a person that feels good about themselves, are not going to go around killing other people. So where do we begin? For instance, for instance, I think a perfect example is the uh, the murders in these in these school in in, in, in these uh, educational institutions. Most of these killings in these educational institutions are. Are, are, are done by white people. People classify themselves, they're killing other white people. And, and it's being realized that something is going on there. Mm -hmm. So where do we begin? Is it, is it self-awareness? Where, where does the process begin? And here's the thing, here's what I have found. I have found that one of the things that's stopping progress from happening is this, Fear and this uh, strong uh, desire to keep racism going. We are not allowing people who can solve these problems to have access so that they can participate in solving these problems. We have to revamp the total, our total educational system. We have to revamp how we do testing, how we, how we judge uh, IQ, all of these are fundamental issues that has to be uh, 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 changed. For instance, the, the, the testing uh, concept that the educational institutions have are racist to the core to keep black people and other people of color out. But they have to be racist these, these, because these they're are, symbolic. Right, right exactly. So, and we have to change that. Right, so the problem is not that they're racist, 
they appear that way, but the problem, as I understand it, is that it's rooted in symbolic thinking, and that is... Well, you can, you, I think you can say racism and symbolic thinking is synonymous, because racism has its origin in symbolic thought. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that we are defeating our own purpose and denying the, uh, the access to people who can solve the very problems that is damaging to, to society and civilization, especially education. The educational system is so, uh, so misused that uh, we are wasting talent, wasting talent, the talent of people who could solve problems by the testing. And I think it's been uh, stated that the uh, testing uh, concept that we have today in today's school is, is meant to discourage certain uh, 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 segments of the population from achieving, to making people feel bad, badly about themselves. And that's one issue that uh, uh, is really prevalent. For instance, people who classify them, themselves as white try their best to make blacks and other people who they deem minority to feel badly about themselves so they cannot achieve, period. That's what happens. And that is due to symbolic behavior. And that's a big thing. That's a big thing. And it's, and, but we continue to deny that fact. We continue, and we, we continue to, 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 uh, to stop any kind of progress to open up and, um, and admit that we're, we're in a state of permanent denial. Addressing symbolic thinking institutionally aside, right. Right. What can I do to, to, to access, to use? I, yeah, I, 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 that's a very... Sim, you know, sim, uh, what is sim, symptomatic thinking? Yeah, I, I, that's a very important uh, 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 question. I think the role of the parent, the role of the mother and father, the role of the community, the role of, of people that you come in contact with is so important, is so important because education is so in institutionalized and that it, as we interact with people around the world, we have to deinstitutionalize our educational system. We have to do that. And, and one way of doing that is that as we interact with other people symptomatically, great things happen. We, 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 we uh, demythologize the situation and we begin to be in a situation where we can learn and create and be innovative which, and do research which leads to unbelievable things in terms of, 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 of curing certain diseases. A whole method of education in the Western world, especially in, in, in the Western world, has to be totally revamped. I like the idea of awareness as education. For instance, when, when, when I hear your ideas, I understand that uh, an example of symbolism is stereotype. So when, exactly, I, when, exactly, right, exactly. when I look at someone and, exactly. and I see the stereotype, I have to know or I have to be aware that that's an example of symbolic thinking. That's easy absolutely. for me. Absolutely. So, absolutely. so that's one stay example. away from stereotypes. That's right. That's, that's right. right. That's stay right. away from assumptions and from judgments to whatever degree you can until you actually engage someone. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. that's, that's key. And, and, and as we re-educate ourselves, Education becomes a fun thing. Education becomes a, a act of, of joy because we make new discoveries. And we, we, when we make new discoveries, then we begin to really solve the problems of the world. And we have the ability to solve the problems of the world. Right now, we're stagnant. Right now, we're, we're tied down and institutionalized. And I say again, we're enslaved by our, our symbol systems where we came and begin to solve the problems that we need to solve and that we could solve. And that's why one of the reasons why I think W.E. Deming, the uh, scholar, made the uh, uh, statement in his book, Out of Crisis, which was published by MIT Press, that um, America is the, uh, is the most backward country in, in the world mm -hmm. because of our misuse of our populations of our misuse of, of, of our educational opportunities and, and our continual uh, denial 
of solving and, and the real problems that lead to all this. And uh, racism has been thrown around so much, but it's a real problem that has not been solved. And thousands of books have been written about racism. Thousands of books have been written about human behavior, about religion, and, and various other subjects. But I, I have to say this, all these disciplines, all these books are built on symbolic ideas symbolic ideas, and, and it, that makes them uh, useless in our growth to become truly civilized and human. Edgar, it was a pleasure. Uh, your work is critically important to the quality of life, to the global quality of life. The Golden Apple, Changing the Structure of Civilization, Volume 1 and Volume 2, Volume 3, soon on its way. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Max. The book, The Golden Apple, Changing the Structure of Civilization. The author, Edgar J. Ridley. We hope you enjoyed the program. We hope you enjoyed Writers on Writing. Please visit us on our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and on QBR.com.